Like I asked my accountant, he says, don't do it, doesn't work. I asked my lawyer, don't do it, it's a liability. Uh, I asked a couple of rich people, don't do it, it, it doesn't make sense. Uh, I asked a billionaire, he's like, yeah, you should definitely do it. And I said, huh? My daughters would have the, she, they will have, I will pay for three or four universities, names, the top. Okay. So whatever those top three or four are at the time, I'll, I'll give them that choice. And then I will, <clears throat> I will have a little thing, a little footnote to it. Don't worry about what you learned there. Only go there to meet people. I want to know where the Obamas are going, okay. where the Bushes are going, where the Charleses are going. You know, I want to know where the Blackstones are sending their kids or their grandkids. And that's the only place I would pay for my kids to go to school. Why the G550? Well, it was the end of the year. And my accountant called me and said, hey man, you got a big tax problem this year. You made too much money. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't make enough money. Okay, all right. And, and he says, you got a big tax problem. I said, what can we do about it? He's like, there's nothing we can do about it. I said, hey, look, there's always something you can do about something. And I hung up on it. And I called Sherry, my CEO, and I said, look, this guy said there's nothing we can do about it. We owe X. Look, we can give the money away. We could spend the money on equipment, material. Like, I could just, I could prepay a bunch of expenses. I could prepay office for, I mean, I'm a very creative person when it comes to not paying taxes. I do not want to pay taxes. This year. Nobody does, but most people don't admit this. Right, most people pay too much taxes. It's yeah. the single biggest expense, and people oh, don't even know it. Exactly. And most people don't have enough surplus money to avoid, to play the tax game the way it's built. Companies, LLCs, right. or, let me check something else. So I went and did some research on buying a jet. If I buy a jet, that jet's 50 million. In America, I can write off the entire 50 million that, that, that month. So I called Gulfstream up. I said, hey, you guys have a, a Gulfstream 550 or 650 for sale. I'm interested in a jet. I got to take delivery by the end of the year. And they're like, call my accounting department. I said, send Gulfstream a check for X. Called the guy back. I said, hey, Rick, call. I know you guys said you don't have a plane available, but I want you to call your accounting department. I sent a little gift to you. Call me back when you get the gift, right? Calls me back. He's like, fuck, I've been doing this for 30 years. Nobody's ever done that. Coca-Cola, General Electric, no company. And you're just a guy, right? He's like, nobody's ever sent me a check prepaid for a plane. 14 days later, we took delivery of a plane. And uh, so we have a Gulfstream 550, 14 hours, one, any, one, any direction without stopping. I can go from London all the way to Los Angeles. Do I, do I put the 50 million in apartments, which is my favorite investment, or do I buy the jet? Or do I just keep the 50? And my decision to get rid of 50, to own the jet, is that it can connect me with the world. It can help me meet people. The old Grant would not have done this. Eight or nine years ago. Okay. I, I wasn't thinking big enough. I was thinking that if I save my money, that if I just save the pennies, you know, save the money, pay attention to the money, then, then Clip the coupons, do everything on the cheap, right? Buy everything on sale, buy low and sell high. That whole, all that old adage of our parents. If I do that, then I'll be better off. And, and the reality is, if you study the wealthiest, I don't mean Bill Gates and Warren Buffett. I mean, if you study Goldman Sachs, that's where the real wealth is. Okay. Study the wealthiest. Explain that. Why isn't it Gates and Buffett? Because they're only worth 80 million, 80, 80, 80, 80 billion. billion. Okay. Okay. You know, Goldman Sachs will destroy 80 million in an hour. You're talking about um, Vanguard controls $5 trillion of ETFs. That's money. So there's so much money on this planet. You gotta you got look at how people, how does Coca-Cola make a decision about three or four or five chains? Because they wanna move their executives around the world to make sure they have their products in the front of the shelves. So that's how I made the decision to do this. Not based on what 98% of the people think, but what 1% or 2% of the population thinks. Like I asked my accountant, he says, don't do it, doesn't work. I asked my lawyer, don't do it, it's a liability. Uh, I asked a couple of rich people, don't do it, it, it doesn't make sense. Uh, I asked a billionaire, he's like, yeah, you should definitely do it. And I said, huh? He's like, you should definitely do it. You, need, you have clients all over the world, you, you want to reach 7 billion people, money is useless. I said, huh? He's like, money is useless until it is used. Right? You don't need money, dude. You need people. He's like, people have the next money you want. Right. And I was like, this was, this was mind-boggling for me. I'm just like, okay, that's real for me. Right? I don't want money. I want freedom.
and the plane buys me freedom. 